All right, y'all. But anyways, here they are. And the earrings will come with two um, stoppings. So you can put in the back of your ear. I already have the image I want to do for my earrings. And I am just going to drag it over to my matte hack board. I'm going to now, he is extremely too big, especially to dangle from my ear. So I am going to bring his image in some. I want to say I'm going to make these earrings at about maybe three, two and a half to three inches long. It depends on how long or dramatic of a look you want to do your earrings, but that's what I'm going to stick with. So I'm just going to bring my image in and get him right at about three inches that I want. And I'm just gonna zoom on in. So right now it's at three inches wide. I think I'm gonna make it to two and a half. And right about there. Maybe I'll do those two sides. So let's go ahead, layer, duplicate him. Slide him over. And I don't want it to be this long because right now we're at about four inches. So I am going to cut. I'm going to save this image here just in case I mess up. But I am going to cut part of his lower half off. And right now he is about at three inches. All right, so he's about two and a half inches wide at about three inches long. So now what I'm going to do is I am going to do a slight border going around him. And I'm going to make that border black. not too much of a border just a slight because as you can tell where his hair is i do not want it to the cricket to cut um have a hard time cutting out his hair area so this is why i'm adding a slight border and let's zoom in to make sure that that is enough All right, so I still see some hair pieces still. As you can tell, let's zoom in a little bit more. All right, so when doing this, right along the edge, you see what well, that'll be a cutout. Let me turn my board a different color so that you can actually see what I'm talking about. So let's do it like a lime green. All right, so actually this is what we have. So right up in here is where the Cricut is going to cut. Here I see there is a white piece there. Let's go ahead and color that in black. And let's see if we can go just a tad bit larger on our border. All right, so now about everything is covered. Do you see the border that we have around him now? So let's press OK. So now with this, shouldn't have no uh, problems with cutting him out as you see here. Right down here, you have room for customization. If you want to do a something customized, you can in that area. Um... But I think I'm going to just leave it as is. I do want to make a small hole right about in this area to hang my earrings. So I am going to grab my cutting tool. I'm going to select the circle. 
All right, so what I'm gonna do is just do a new file, blank file, go to inches, do it at 300, and I'm gonna do 0.5 inch, 0.5 inch. All right, so here I am going to color this black. I'm going to get my cutting tool. I'm going to go get my shape tool for the circle. And I want to do this at 0 0.15. 0 0.15. And this is how small I'm going to make my circle. I'm going to drag my circle to the top. And I'm going to make sure it's lined in the center. So I'm going to grab it and him. I'm going to center the two. And being that I have it white, you can't see it. So let me change the color so you can be able to see it. All right. So that is where our hole is going to be. And I am going to just bring it in just a tad bit smaller. We do not need that hole that big. And let's center it again. Okay. And then I am going to lock both of them. So now we have where our earring is going to hang from. Before I even um, attach my circle, let me just duplicate him. hide him and then I'm gonna connect the two and I'm going to merge these two layers together now this is a permanent part of the image with that said I am going to now make my little hole there so when Cricut get ready to cut it out it's gonna recognize that it needs to cut that as well so let's select deselect now I want to take this here image and I want to make it a duplicate image. So now I got the front and this one here is going to be the back. I am going to reverse this here image, rotate. All right, so now we have front and back. So with this here one sheet, you can all, you have plenty of room to make other images you want to do. So I'm going to just duplicate these several times. Now I am ready to print. So before I go to print this here image, I am going to remove this background. So I will be printing this using my Epson SC L570 printer. So let me go ahead and get that ready for print. All right. So this is the SC L570. And I can print up to 24 inches long on here. As you can tell, I already had my eight and a half paper set. But because I did not see a setting for the eight and a half paper, I just decided to use my um, 13 inch roll. all right y'all so like image. i originally said at the beginning of the video i was going to do my um mat hat for cricket but as i was doing this i realized cricket had changed some things when it came to the software so i wasn't able to do it but i will still continue to hack it i just have to sit down and figure out another way however um i rather design in adobe photoshop but you don't have to you can actually print and cut right on um, Cricut Design Space platform. But for me personally, I had to use the Epson SCF 570 because my smaller sublimation printer is at the shop. And with the, S, um, the Epson SC 570, I probably got that all wrong. 
you have to print directly from their program. So this is why I did this step. All right, so back to the video. We're going to make it. I am not going to do a bleed on that because I want my printed image larger than my sublimated image. But we are going to do it on a mat. We this time will be using eight and a half by 11 paper. And for some reason, it's not allowing us that option. Why? I am doing a basic cut material size. Now, the last time I was able to do an eight and a half by 11. Why is not allowing me to do an eight and a half by 11 now? Let's see what size we have. Eight and a half by 11. I tell you, Cricut Design Space be messing stuff up. I am using the 11 by 17 sublimation cardstock. So basically, I'm just going to align it to the mat. And no, I will not be using the whole board. So, but I decided not to cut. I'm just going to cut it afterwards. I'm going to tape it because right now this board is no longer sticky. And during this cutting process, I do not want the board to move. Even if using the purple mat, I am going to suggest doing this, okay? Because you do not want your image to more move in that you'll be cutting on very heavy uh, board. So, to show you with this hack, I'm going to show you really quickly how I'm going to cut through this here board. All right, y'all. So, with this hack, I'm about to show you. You will be doing this basically at your own risk. Not quite sure what it um, so entails when it tell, comes to your Cricut warranty or whether or not it may tear up your machine. I don't know. Settled, I have not had any on, problems with it. So this is what I do. If you choose to do it this way, have at it. So when but the I just blade want to give settled, you it looks that, like this. their information. It's not going to be too much of that tip out. All right. However, I don't... I need to have a little bit more blade out than this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hack this here uh, deep point blade by putting some tape. I'm going to press down on it. I don't want too much of the blade out, but just a tad bit. And I'm using clear regular tape. So right now, this is how much of the blade that I have out. Okay. So now what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and put this, take out the regular fine point blade, and I'm going to put the deep point blade. That's all I did, y'all. Just put the deep point blade in. Let me show you my settings that I'm going to be using. So I want to cut out my sublimation images a little bit smaller than the actual printed image. So I'm going to click on it. I'm going to do an inset. Not that much because we do not want to cut our hole. Let's see about maybe 35. Let's apply it. And let's bring this in. I'm going to turn it red so I know that we are. The red is going to be our inset. And let's have it had the original one. Let me zoom in because the way that this looks, it looks like I am going to have to probably my next cut move my holes down just a tad bit lower. Because I do not want my 
and it is very close y'all when i say close very close to the ends so i know in my next design i am going to have to bring that hole just a little bit further because we do not want it to disconnect or open up all right so but we're going to go ahead with it just because of the sake of this video let's make it we're going to be using a mat I'm going to continue for my settings I will have to go to browse because I don't have it as a base material settings and I will be using the meta board the matte board matte board and for those settings I'm going to show you really quickly I do have that set right now at 350 times 9 cuts using a deep point blade. I'm going to do more and then I am going to send my mat with my sublimation chipboard and the Cricut. How it cuts. All right, y'all. So the image has finished cutting, and let's see <clears throat> what we have. Y'all, so I am going to have to go a little bit deeper, not deeper, but I'm gonna still have to do maybe um some more cuts because it did not cut it all the way all right y'all so if you run into this problem you may need to adjust some more of your your blades and your um deep blade holder or do more um cuts okay so like i said my first cut i ran into problems where i had to adjust the blade if you, you want to make sure that this cuts to all the way through well. and you do not want to if pull it away from the do. board because then you might just mess up your um cut image because you want to make sure you go through both layers of the board so i'm just going to cut it away and finish cutting it with my scissors And it's really, yeah, certain areas not cut all the way, y'all. So, I'm going to have to redo that. So, now I'm getting ready to cut out my subla. Let's see. Did I'm almost so close to that top, y'all. Be careful that when you're creating your hole, not to get so close to the head, especially if you're doing an inset. So, now let's go ahead and cut out. The image, I will be cutting my image out by hand. So let's see what we have. Which side would this be? All right, so I'm gonna, yeah, so that'll be that side. Let's put that to the side. You are going to need a pressing pillow because you want to make sure that when you're pressing down, you're getting um, even coverage. You're going to want to cover up your pressing pillow. I'm just using some basic craft paper. I'm going to tape this down. 
to keep the image in place. I'm not going to use my spray. I am going to use some clear heat resistance tape. I'm going to tape it directly to the paper. I'm going to fold the paper and of course we want our image, our sublimated image on top, not the substrate, but we want that image because you want to press with the paper image face down. All right, I have my Cricut press set at 350 degrees for 45 seconds and I am applying pressure to it. All right, so that was one side. Woo, and that was hot. And let's see what we have, y'all. You're going to want that to cool. It's not the point of the image. It's the point of when you're placing that tape on the back, when you pull it, you do not want to be pulling up the sublimation um, film underneath. So you want to kind of let it cool first before you pull off your tape if you do it this way. I'm going to show you another way to prevent from doing that. But here it is. All right. So let's do the back side, y'all. Let's get the other image. This should be the reverse image of this. Make sure it's lined up. So instead of taping this across like I just did for the front, what I'm going to do is I'm going to place it down. I'm going to get my tape. Put it across, try not to move the image now. I'm gonna flip that over. And when I flipped it over, I did see some ink, but it's on the bottom. But if you don't feel comfortable with pressing directly on that, just get another piece of paper and put over it. Once again, 350 for 45 seconds. Okay. All right, y'all. And it is hot, y'all, so I do suggest that you're wearing gloves when doing this. All right, so basically what I'm going to do is repeat this same step, but for the other earring. So this is what we're looking like, y'all. All right, so now let's go ahead and make these into our earrings. All right, y'all, so now I am ready to put my earrings together. I no longer need this here. Matt, I am going to need my jewelry pliers. So what I'm going to do right now is get my jump ring. And thread it through the hole we made. And now I am going to get my earring. Put it through. I'm going to bring this back forward. And y'all, I do sell the earring kit on my website. So don't forget to go check that out if you need to get your kit and to include the sublimation um, cardstock board. 
All right, y'all. But anyways, here they are. And the earrings will come with two um, stoppings. So you can put in the back of your ear. I ran into some, to some technical difficulties when uh, putting them in because, like I said, the hole, um, I wound up cutting the hole. So I'm going to have to redesign these. And I, all I did was put some tape. You probably can't see it, but I taped it. Just so that I can um, take pictures of it. Display it. But I will be wearing them. Yes, I will. But I am getting ready to go do me another pair. And make sure I do it right this time. But for the sake of this video, there you have it.